Hi, everyone, and welcome to Behind the Numbers. My name is Dave Bookbinder. I'm a managing director at B. Riley Financial, and I'm also the author of the new ROI, Return on Individuals. Today's program is going to be all about how to market your business, how to make it more visible, and I'm pleased to welcome my guest, Gordon Van Wetchel, who's the president and founder of the Alchemy Consulting Group. Gordon, welcome to Behind the Numbers. Thank you, Dave. Great to be with you. Gordon, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about you and Alchemy, and then we'll get started. Okay. Uh, as you said, I started Alchemy uh, back in 2003. Uh, we are primarily a digital direct results marketing firm. We do do some offline things as well. Uh, prior to starting this company, I built and sold three other companies. Uh, those were the successful ones. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 24, and of course there's been some failures along the way as well. Well, they say failure is the key to success. So you bring a great background and a great perspective to have this conversation with because you're not only helping companies in their efforts to uh, enhance their visibility, but you've been there and done that as a business owner and entrepreneur. So uh, really eager to dive in. So without further ado, let me, let me dive in here. Why don't we start by talking about, at a high level, what the actual importance is of marketing and social media in particular. Okay. Well, marketing is certainly the way that you get your product or service, your brand out to the marketplace, to, to the target market that you've identified. A uh, lot of different ways to do that. The, the core, the foundation, of course, is having a properly designed website and a Google for Business page. But once that foundation is in place, social media is a possible marketing channel for you. The question you have to ask as a business owner is, where do my ideal customers gather information? And if that's on social media or certain social media platforms, then you absolutely need to be providing content and creating relationships and interacting with those prospects on those channels. When we work with a client, one of the things we always caution them is, just because social media is there, it doesn't mean you have to be on every channel. You really have to evaluate it based on where your ideal customers spend time, where they gather information, where they are likely to be looking for your product or service. Yeah, so in the B2C space uh, where you're dealing with, we'll call it you know, a, a retail, or when I say B2C, it's business to consumer for those watching and right. listening. Um, for, uh, platforms like Instagram, for example, are really impactful in certain circumstances. Why don't you talk about and maybe compare and contrast uh, the marketing strategy for a B2C platform as opposed to a business-to-business -business platform? Where would the business-to-business -business people want to be on socials? Again, it depends upon whether their ideal customers are going to social to look for information. Social media is usually more effective in the B2C space, but, but again, some businesses are marketing to other businesses who spend some time there or at least consider that one channel. Uh, a good example, we work with a, a light manufacturing company who provides products that are primarily used by the pest control and the foundation repair industries. And he's active on Facebook because again, a lot of pest control companies do spend time on Facebook. That's a place where they're looking for their clients. So we're able to target those companies through his Facebook, through our clients' Facebook advertising. Where does LinkedIn fit in with your uh, social media strategy? I think every business owner, every professional practice owner needs to have a personal profile on LinkedIn. Uh, it is kind of the go-to professional standard for putting your name and your business out there. One of the things that's important to remember is your LinkedIn profile should not be your resume. It should really be a value proposition for what you bring to the, to the conversation with a prospect, why someone should consider doing business with you. Uh, but for those reasons, I think LinkedIn is very important. Yeah, can, can we talk a little bit about uh, reputation, online reputation, a little bit, Gordon? What, what's your perspective there in not only building, but maintaining your online reputation in a world now where it can be completely destroyed by somebody writing a bad review on a social media platform. Yeah, yeah. Back in 2014, the primary search engines made a change in their algorithm to really start emphasizing a, a, a business's online reputation. What they wanted to do was make sure that their customer, the person who's doing the search, is 
able to find information about prospective vendors that would be current and that would demonstrate social proof beyond just what the business had to say about themselves. So your online reputation has now become a critical part of that search engine algorithm for where your website is placed in search results. And the search engines are also looking for recency in those reviews. You know, they emphasize reviews in the last 30 days and then 31 to 90, and, and it goes out from there, and they don't even look at reviews that are over two years old anymore. They're also looking at the source of reviews. Uh, if you have a testimonial page on your website, the search engines are not going to crawl that and consider those valid reviews because it's too easy for someone to fabricate them. What they're looking for are reviews on independent platforms that are coming from unique IP addresses. The other aspect to the review isn't just how the search engines look at it, but how your prospective customers look. There's several surveys out there that say anywhere between 85 and 90% of prospective customers are going online and they're looking for reviews. And they want to look at a minimum of 10 reviews. So to wrap it up from a business owner's perspective, Dave, it's really important to have a reputation marketing platform in place a system where you're consistently asking your clients for reviews, getting those published in your Google business page or other relevant social media platforms where people are looking for reviews, and then keep that consistency going so that your customers can see that you're providing the level of service they would want as a customer. Yeah, Gordon, can you offer some advice to business owners about how they can actually implement, I'll, I'll call it a, um, a review program, if you will, and by that what I'm alluding to is it, it, it seems to me that when I'm looking at reviews for whatever the product or service may be, folks are more passionate and inspired to write a review if it's a negative experience. It, it's more of a rare occurrence if somebody's had a great experience that they're likely to do it, and I know that companies are always saying, hey, if you like it, you know, please write a review on it. What can companies do as a, as a formal strategy to, to get their, their happy customers more involved in that process? You know, at the time of the transaction, uh, if they ask the, the customer if they would leave a review and then make it really easy for them. Uh, for a lot of our customers, we'll design a, a simple postcard or even a business card that gives the customer the link that we would like them to go to, typically your Google for Business page, uh, and leave their review there. We also have a platform where we'll create a branded page. It's like a landing page it's branded for our client, and we'll, through email and text messages, invite their customers to leave a review there. That page gives us a little bit of a filter because if it is a review that may be three stars or less, we offer the customer the opportunity to really share what their experience was and immediately email the owner of the business or whomever they've designated so that, that someone can respond to that customer and try to turn that around. But the most effective way is for the business to ask the customer at the time of the transaction and then make it easy for them. Yeah, and, and Gordon, um, besides doing your so-called day job, you've also written uh, nine books, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, How do you have time for any other hobbies in, that, in doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I joke, but you're kind enough actually, to... Actually, I do have one hobby. Uh, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but I've been doing bonsai. Uh, Japanese trees is the way a lot of people think of it, but I've been doing bonsai for 35 years. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that offline. I had a bonsai tree that lived for about 15, and then I killed it inadvertently. So we'll talk about <laughs> that later. But I want to focus on you here, and you've written nine books. And I want to ask you uh, how folks can contact you if they want to learn more about you or work with you. And, and you've also uh, made a very generous offer to the uh, Behind the Numbers audience about getting a free download of one of your books. Sure. So people can learn more about our company by going to our website, thealchemy, A-L-C-H-E-M-Y, consultinggroup.com, thealchemyconsultinggroup.com. And then, you know, my offer to your audience is my most recent book is Core 5 Marketing. Uh, if they would like to get a free digital download of that book, they can go to Core 5, and that's numeral 5, core5marketing.com. Uh, there's a little landing page, provide your email address, and we'll give you a download link to be able to get a free copy of the book. 
Yep, that's awesome. Thank you. And for you folks watching and listening, don't worry about it. If you missed it, you can look in the show notes wherever you're watching or listening, and you will find that link right there. So thank you for that, Gordon. I want to talk to you now a little bit about um, representing the brand value in, in social media and marketing in general, right? Brands are, are delivering a message to get the consumer or the purchaser to buy into that particular brand's why. How do you advise your clients to articulate the brand value as they're going about their marketing strategy? Yeah, that's a great question because so many smaller businesses confuse the idea of brand with their logo or their colors or the sign in front of their building uh, or at the top of their website. Your brand is really the promise that you're making to your clients, uh, to your customers, to your patients. It's what you say that you are best at delivering and that you promise to them that you will deliver that. Uh, you know, the classic examples are, you know, pizza fresh and hot in 30 minutes or less or when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. Well, that's the brand for those companies. And for a, for a local business, it's really important to create a statement. We like to call it a value proposition that really summarizes what it is that they offer to their clientele and then make that very prominent in their marketing. It should be above the fold on the home page of the website. It should be something that they use in their signature line on their blog posts or their emails. But brand is important, particularly for a local company, because so few companies do it well. And when you do, it really helps you stand out from your competitors. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to ask you a completely unfair and loaded question here with regard to helping uh, professional services firms differentiate, right? So I'll, I'll pick on accounting and, and legal, for instance, where there may be a perception, and I emphasize perception, that many of these firms are the same. And mm. many purchasers of their services are price shoppers. And we all know that you get what you pay for. But if you were talking to the folks in professional services who are watching and listening, what might you advise them in terms of how to really differenti differentiate their brand from everybody else in their space? Well, I'll give you an example of a CPA firm, and that's one of the, the niches you mentioned. CPA services are generally considered pretty much the same across the board. As we really dug into this client's business and analyzed what they were doing, it became clear that they had a special aptitude for working with real estate professionals and real estate investors. So we created a totally separate website and marketing funnel targeting that specific group. Now, they still had their regular CPA services website, uh, but they also had this separate niche site that really emphasized one of their areas where they were particularly proficient. So that's one thing that a professional practice can do. If you have, if, if you really don't have that area of specialty, then one of the things you can emphasize is client experience. You know, really focus on those testimonials and those reviews because people that are shopping are looking for social proof. And if they feel like there's, you know, that, that everybody's the same, that it's a generic category, then that social proof is probably going to tip your tip the balance in your favor for them to at least give you an opportunity for their business. Gotcha. Gordon, that's a good point, uh, point to make a quick pause here uh, in the program. We've got to pay a few bills here, so you don't go anywhere. You <laughs> folks watching and listening, we'll be right back on Behind the Numbers after this quick commercial break. Oh, our new home. Lots of windows, great light. But the birds... They're back. Yes, I hear them. Uh-oh. Why are these birds so angry? At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. We save a lot. I'm going. I'm going. Ah! Hurry, hurry. I know, I know, For I know. bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Welcome. I'm Barry Lefkowitz. I'm your host on New Perspectives on RVN TV. I come to you each week with issues and topics that you will generally find in the news. 
And if you're looking to be able to get caught up and know what's going on, then New Perspectives is the show for you on RVN TV. Look forward to having you. And welcome back to Behind the Numbers. I'm Dave Bookbinder, and today we're talking all things marketing and social media with Gordon Van Wetchel, who is the president and founder of Alchemy Consulting Group. Gordon, good stuff in the first segment. I don't want to waste any time here. I'm going to jump right in here and continue the conversation. And I want to ask you about getting found uh, on search engines in particular, uh, because we, we alluded to LinkedIn before. And in my world, in professional services, uh, I believe that when most folks are considering working with me or others like me, they go to your LinkedIn profile and then they'll Google you. So we, we, we covered LinkedIn a little bit. Talk about the search engine component there. How do you get found? It's increasingly difficult. Uh, the search engines, well, you have to remember there's some number of millions, more than a million pages a day being uploaded to, the, to Google alone. And the competition on the first page or second page of Google is so intense, 75% uh, of searchers, according to Google statistics, stop looking after page one. So the real effort is to try to get to page one. Uh, there are ways that you can do that with some medium and longer tail keywords. Uh, content is critically important for getting your website found, for increasing its location in the search engines. Uh, but probably for most companies, particularly newer companies, the, the fastest path to page one is with Google AdWords, with paid advertising. Hmm. And that's really Google's intent is to drive customers to need to invest some money into advertising uh, so that it can be found. It can be done organically. It's a longer term process. Uh, we tell our clients that it's nine to 12 months before those significant primary keywords are going to appear on the first pages. Uh, we can get less, uh, we can get longer tail keywords, less competitive keywords ranked more quickly. But for those highly competitive keywords, you're talking nine to 12 months and it's not inexpensive. Hmm. Well, in, in the world of the, uh, the business to consumer where we're talking about a product, I think we all have a general concept of what that looks like every day in consumer land. We're bombarded with various ads and so forth, talking about products, virtues, features, et cetera. In, in the business to business world, uh, in, in professional services in particular, right? Uh, how important is the, the idea of thought leadership, whether it be newsletters, blogging, writing, things like that as a differentiator? I think those are really important. Uh, and, and for exactly the reason you, you say, Dave, it's a, it's a differentiator. In those highly competitive services, anything that you can do to gain an edge, to gain the attention of a, of a prospect, to separate yourself from the numerous competitors, uh, that's all to your advantage. A well-written newsletter that is current, not just a template that you get from whatever industry you're in, service bureaus, uh, but a well-written newsletter that speaks to the specific issues for your target market can be huge. Uh, blogging, if you have people that are consistently going to your website, blogging can be important. But what we like to do is publish those blogs on the website and then also put them on LinkedIn or put links to them on other social media where your prospects are spending time looking. Uh, getting traffic to a blog page is more difficult. Uh, that's really more of a search engine uh, optimization strategy than client acquisition in most cases. Yeah, so when we talk about newsletters, for instance, um, the delivery mechanism matters. Um, for me personally, I know I'm, I'm hitting the unsubscribe button on a lot of inbound emails that I get daily. Um, yes. what, what do you think about email marketing and, and is there a, a proper way to do that so that we're not just always hitting unsubscribe or pushing them to junk by default? Yeah, the, the reason that you and I push unsubscribe so much is because the senders haven't really thought through who they're sending to. A real key to a successful email marketing campaign is identifying the specific niche that you want to target 
and then creating emails that are very specifically answering the issues in the mind of those people and subject lines that are compelling that speak to those issues. Uh, far too often, you know, people will, will buy a list or they'll develop a list over time and they just send the same email to everyone. And, you know, that, that's a waste. That's why people unsubscribe. Uh, there are newsletters and thought leaders in my space that I will constantly read their material, but it's because they make it relevant specifically to me. They're not sending stuff to advertising agencies like mine and plumbers on the same list. Yeah, good point. Is there a, a right cadence for these things? I mean, I think a lot of newsletters are generally monthly. Is there a proper way to do that from a cadence perspective? You know, we publish our newsletter monthly. We advise our clients who want to do a newsletter to publish it monthly. Uh, an email cadence kind of depends upon the purpose of the emails. Uh, if it's just to keep your business top of mind, uh, or at least in the mind of your prospects. Once or twice a month is enough. If you're rolling out a specific product to a targeted niche, you might want to do daily emails for a period of four or five days. Uh, it really depends upon what the purpose of the email campaign is to determine that frequency. Yeah, let's take it up one level, maybe even to 30,000 feet. We've talked about social platforms and so forth, Gordon, but let's talk about technology in general. Are, are there innovations happening in the marketing space that we ought to be aware of? You know, I think the biggest change in the last 24 months is the ease and low cost of retargeting. Uh, we started doing retargeting about eight years ago when it was a $5,000 bill just to be able to get into the platforms and play the game. Today, it's very, very inexpensive. We have successful retargeting campaigns for our clients that are running three to $500 a month for can a you, local can business. Can you help define what that means, uh, what retargeting means? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Retargeting, uh, well, it's easier to explain by sharing how you've most likely experienced it. If you've ever shopped on Amazon, and not purchase the product, you'll see ads for that product for the next several days everywhere you go online. For the rest well, of that means life, you've actually. been retargeted. And the big companies have done this successfully for several years. It's now technology that's cost efficient for a local business. Uh, and we, we try to make sure every one of our clients uh, is doing retargeting. If you have as few as 50 people a month, 50 visitors a month to your website, retargeting can be a powerful tool. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I, was, I was saying, I was probably speaking over you, but yeah, I get retargeted, it seems like, uh, every day forever. Uh, you look at one ad and, and all of a sudden everybody knows that's what you're looking at and you just can't get yeah. away from it. Uh, Gordon, uh, for the folks who are watching and listening who want to learn more about you or how to get that free copy of your book, Core 5 Marketing, how can they do that? Uh, the free book is at Core 5, it's numeral 5, core5marketing.com. It's a landing page. Just put in your email address and we'll send you a link to download the book for free. And our primary website is The Alchemy, A-L-C-H-E-M-Y, alchemyconsultinggroup.com. Thank you for that. We've spent a lot of time so far talking about the online world. Let, let's shift gears, Gordon, and talk about the offline world of marketing. What should folks need to be thinking about and focusing on for their offline campaigns? You know, it depends upon the product or service, but direct mail is still an incredibly powerful tool when done correctly. Hmm. Uh, you know, for a local business, it's easy using the post office's every door direct mail program to target the carrier routes around your local business. Uh, for companies that cover a broader area, identifying a proper mailing list, and this is particularly true in the B2C space, excuse me, B2B space, identifying a proper list of your prospects and putting together a direct mail sequence uh, can be very powerful. When I say sequence, typically we try to send three pieces in a 21 day period. And those pieces can be exactly the same, but statistically what we normally find is the response for the first piece that's mailed will be equal to the sum of the second and third piece. So if you stop after one piece, you're, you're leaving basically half of the prospects on the table. Because the reality is people sort their mail over the trash can. They may or may not open your first piece. 
But when they see the same envelope, and again, that's another strategy, we like to see something written on the outside of the envelope, almost like the subject line of an email, something that compels the person to consider opening it. When they see that that second or third time, now they're going to be curious and they're going to open it. Another very effective direct mail strategy is postcards, uh, greeting cards. Everybody likes to see a greeting card. Uh, you know, it's in a different style envelope. It's obviously a greeting card, and they open them. Uh, statistically, according to the Direct Mail Marketing Association, greeting cards get opened more than 85% of the time, whereas regular mail, you're hopeful, hopeful to get 45 or 50% with a standard business envelope and a business return address. So direct mail is an offline strategy that I think is very powerful. Another one that people overlook because they think it's too expensive is radio. Again, depending upon who your target market is, radio can be extremely powerful. The key to radio is answering the question, do I have a defined or an undefined market? A defined market is what I was just describing, where you can get a list and target your prospects directly. A non-defined market is where you don't know who a potential customer is. A good example would be a chiropractor. You never know who's going to wake up tomorrow morning and have a back issue and think, yeah, you know, I need to see a chiropractor. Well, if you've had an ongoing radio campaign in that target market area, it's likely that they'd at least be familiar with your name. So radio, it's a long-term play, but it's a great way to create brand awareness for businesses that have a non-defined market. Gordon, we're just about out of time here, but in 60 seconds, I want to sneak in one more thing for you. Is there such thing as a most important marketing tool for folks? Oh, it's your website. Your website is your 24-7 salesperson, 365. But the mistake we see so often is business owners fill their website with a lot of platitudes and generalities about how great they and their business is, and they don't think about what the prospect is really looking for. They don't have that value proposition clearly stated above the fold on the website. And they don't use video enough. Uh, statistically now, people would much rather watch a video than read your copy. So we love to do a 60 to 75 second introductory video with the business owner and put it on the home page. So yeah, the single most important thing that you can do for marketing is that website. Awesome. Gordon, a lot of great stuff. I really appreciate you spending time with us. Unfortunately, uh, it goes quickly here on Behind the Numbers. So uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. I've enjoyed that, our conversation, Dave. Yeah, we've been talking all things marketing with Gordon Van Wetchel, who's the president and founder of Alchemy Consulting Group. My name is Dave Bookbinder, and I'm the person that my clients turn to when they want to know what their most important assets are worth. If you'd like to know, feel free to reach out to me. We'll have a conversation. You can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And as always, I want to thank you for watching and listening to Behind the Numbers. Really appreciate your support. Please hit the subscribe button, rate, leave a review. Your questions are always appreciated, so keep them coming. Thanks, folks, and until next time, take care.